This week we are going to be in Kansas, one of my absolute favorite states to be, the Sunflower State. But you are picking up the bow for the first time, which I'm really excited to watch happen. I'm pretty excited. Got to learn all the essentials over again. So complicated. I feel real good. And we got a big, another big cold front hitting right in like two hours. I'm tickled pink to have these opportunities. I'm tickled pink to have the relationships that I do. Bump, 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 bump. No, no. It's unfortunate that it did happen, but that is 100% part of bow hunting. This story is special. Very special. Because you are learning to shoot a bow right-handed. Right, opposite-handed. Right. Yeah, you are left-handed. Left-handed. Had a college injury. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do nothing else in baseball and just never realized why I shot crossbow forever. Mm -hmm. Me and you sat down, I said, I'd like to try to do it. Oh, if I only knew how difficult this would be. <laughs> Draw, you put your knuckles on the jaw, strain to the tip of your mouth, and then to your nose, across your nose. You gotta learn all the essentials over again. It's so complicated. I take for granted the fact that I've shot a bow since I was, you know, pretty much as, as old as I can remember, but shooting a compound bow for sure since I was 10. Yeah. Haven't had any major, major injuries that's put me out for more than, you know, a couple weeks, a few weeks. That will do it for today right there. Come along better. It's not, uh, it's not terrible. Let's just put it that way. So you kind of take it for granted that you do something that long and you're having to learn as an adult how to do something from scratch essentially. All right, so this is day, I think 25, maybe 30. Uh, I've been recording every day. It's my first day at 60. Now I might come back and not have any errors, but first day at 60, let's give it a shot. I shot thousands and thousands of arrows this summer. Right, so I feel pretty good with that. And with COVID shutting us down, I had plenty of time to shoot 100 errors a day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But I'm very, very happy with what I'm doing right now. I mean, am I scattered all over the place? Yes, but I mean, I'm hitting within three or four inches of that circle. So am I mad about that? No. Could I tighten them up and be better? Yes. But I mean, I, I recommend everybody trying to do this opposite eye one time because I didn't realize how blind I was in that eye. It was starting from new. I mean, I felt really good at 20 to 30. Uh, after 30, it started really getting blurry. But with my non-dominant eye, I mean, I'm telling you, the pen takes up the whole target from back there. And uh, that's, the, that's my number one problem right now. I'm eager to see you out in the field and uh, to get something in front of you and hopefully you get come to full draw and experience that. Cause it's a different level of excitement when it comes to uh, having a mature deer in front of you and pulling back your bow versus you know, clicking the safety off. Right. There's a, there's a difference. There is a difference. Big difference. It's just the way it is. I've been going to Kansas for years. We, we highlighted this last year, my relationship with Saltgrass Outfitters with James and Clark. What we're doing this year is what we, I've done in the se several years in the past. Look, basically looking at the weather. We got all of October to hunt and uh, I'm just looking at the weather, looking for a cold front. And once you know, in the middle of the middle of the month, we, uh, uh, we had a big one coming. Well, just arrived here in Kansas. Got my main man, James, Jimothy, if you will. And uh, we're about to throw up a, a blind. This is the spot that they've got their eye on, but they had a stand and it's hung for a south wind. And we got a lot of north wind coming in with the big front. So we're gonna throw up this new log blind um, right here in the cedar patch behind me. And uh, this is gonna be a killing spot. This hunt was gonna be fun, not only because it's like going, you know, returning home with them guys every year, but you're gonna be in camp with me. Yep. And this is your first time coming to Central Kansas and with Saltgrass, right. correct?
I've always hunted more the north part of uh, Kansas, and just seeing pictures and stuff, the deer are way bigger. <laughs> it's just, I mean, man, I, I was like, oh my gosh, is this okay? So I was getting really excited about that. A lot of farmland, lots and lots of farmland there. I think that has a lot to do with the uh, size of it. I mean, it's just, that was huge. And those are big deer. Per usual, we get there before the front. Grateful in the fact that they kind of let us have the run right out of the middle, place right. uh, for the, the time that we're there, which is awesome. Well, we're out here midday. As you can tell, it's windy. The front just rolled through. Chains and cars, they got cameras out all over the place. Next to the camera up the field, maybe 100 yards. But we'll put out this tree all along the top of the trees right here. Just put out the bog camera. Put out a few of those protein blocks. Hopefully get the bucks to stop right here in front of the camera. I feel good. This front's gonna get, get the deer up and moving. I feel good about a John Max chance. And uh, we get up there and they show us what they got and where's what deer is where, and we start going and putting up uh, blinds, putting up new cameras, trying to find new uh, spots just in case, you know, uh, plan A and plan B falls through, we have something to fall back on. Because while you're in plan A, you need to be thinking about plan D and E, you know? Right. That you're just always thinking ahead. For me, there was one particular spot that uh, James had been eyeballing this buck out in the wide open. I'm talking like a pasture. Yeah. And uh, we'd actually went out there one of the, you know, the first day we were there and hung a, hung a stand okay. there. Yep. I was excited to get there because James had been seeing that buck with some regularity. We are heading to the tree. And it is a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Cold front came through three days ago. Today is definitely warm. Uh, it's in the low 70s right now. But you could probably tell it's overcast. We got a great wind blowing in a great direction. There's several deer over here, but there's one in particular that uh, has been bedding up on some CRP to the south and then working his way to a rye field, which is oh, half a mile north of us right now. So now he's got to you know, have a mature buck in front of us. So I'm pumped here in central Kansas with Saltgrass Outfitters, Clark Schmidt and James Silman. We've come here a long time. And uh, I absolutely love being up here. And this year, I got my main man, John Christopher, in camp with me, which is even better. So, I feel good about moving tonight, to be honest. I really do. I really think that we're going to see a shooter or two tonight. So, hopefully we can get one within range. So unfortunately, we're waiting. We look up in the direction really we want the buck to come from, and here comes a bunch of cows. Mm. Yeah. So these cows are just slowly feeding through these cottonwood trees that we want the deer to feed through. And so I get down a couple times trying to run them off. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right?
We scared the bull. That's what we need to do. Sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horn. I just tried. All right, any second now. I'm just gonna come to full draw and wait. Hey babe, what are you doing? Um, folding laundry. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, guess what I'm doing? What? Hiking? I'm in a in a tree looking at a dead buck at 30 yards. Seriously? Yes, ma'am. Why? Yeah, it was uh one of the ones I sent you a picture of. He's a good buck. Love you. Too. Right. Good job, baby. Love you. Thanks. <sighs> well, it's been probably I don't know 20 or 30 minutes. I put another follow-up shot into him. You know, when you have a chance to uh, get a follow-up shot, you know, you take it. So I did. I was about to, about to walk up and hold him. He's a really good deer, a really mature deer. And um, I'm, I'm tickled pink to have these opportunities. I'm tickled pink to have the relationships that I do uh, with James and Clark here. And uh, for as many years as I've, as I've had it, I'm just truly, truly grateful for that, uh, well, for this opportunity and for that relationship that we've had for a decade now. So it's pretty, pretty special to come out here every year. It's, one, it's absolutely my favorite hunt. Some of my most favorite people that I get to share camp with every year. And, uh, and obviously they never, they never, hardly ever let down uh, as far as uh, big buck action. So they didn't, they didn't disappoint this year either. Hey man. Yeah, man. Thanks, sir. 
Yeah, man, he came in at 545. 545, broad daylight in the wide open. <laughs> Gonna walk right beside us. And I uh, was at 40 yards, about to, you know, about to be at the kill zone. Yeah. And looked up, up the road, and there was a freaking combine coming down the road. And he took off and went to that CRP. And then he just back out. No, well, no, an hour, an hour or so later. This guy, we killed him right at dark. Yeah. I, it wasn't a terrible shot. It was right here in the shoulder and it hit the offside shoulder and he dropped right in his tracks. I mean, right. he just fell straight down. I put another follow up in him and. Perfect. Yeah, no tracking required. <laughs> hey, James. What's up? Do you see this dead deer? I see. I got my buck on the ground. It was awesome having you in camp because we don't, we, we share camp in you know, the last few years. Um, but you know, it's just yeah. it's always it's always better whenever you right. you can put one on the ground and your buddies in camp. Yep. And so it was nice having it was awesome having you there, uh, but you still have your tag burning a hole in your pocket. So now, oh yeah, it's like I'm gung ho, man, and uh, get it. You know, we set up and we had to wait to the right wind for this one spot that we wanted. Me and you had sat down and we had already looked. The wind's not coming in until two days later. Representing you, BA. And that's when it shifted. And that's when the cold front was coming in. And we was like, perfect. Another cold front? Yes, another cold front. And I've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just to be off the key, it was 81 degrees. And when we got out of the stand, it was 33. I've never seen a 50 degree drop mm -hmm. in my life as a, any kind of hunter, just being a person in general. I've never seen that. As a human being. Yeah, as a human <laughs> being. I had some, I mean, I saw some deers, younger bucks, you know, and I started seeing some movement. I, was, I guess that front was really getting them going. Hey guys, well as you can tell, it's 82 degrees outside. Got about a 20 mile an hour wind. 30 degrees this morning, goes to 80. And then by six, seven o'clock tonight, it's down to 30 degrees again. I've never seen anything like this. Hot day, here we go. Wind's blowing just under 60. 85 degrees. It's supposed to go to, I think, north, northwest. And it's supposed to be 30 degree drop by six o'clock. I'm anxious to see this. I don't know about y'all, but I mean, I had never seen anything 50 degree drop in two hours. But the wind is definitely whooping. Here we go. We had set out the twisted oats block and corn to help me out and get the, because I mean, like you said, I mean, I just started hunting. I felt really good at 20 to 25 yards. I felt really, really good. But this will stop those deer. This will stop the deer, give me something to, you know, give you time, time to, to pull back, pose yourself. Yeah. yeah, try to, right? Because I mean, it's, it's my first time to shoot it. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. John says, hey, look, right there comes a buck. We got a rub and a scrape going, and he's coming right to that corner, right where we wanted it. I mean, he couldn't ask for any better.
That's not the last time it's going to happen. No, no. It's unfortunate that it did happen. Yeah. But that is 100% part of bow hunting. It sucks that you put all that work in during the summer and the you know the preseason preseason months to uh, you know to get that opportunity and you know to have the opportunity to slip through your fingers. But I drew it back and I pulled the trigger on it and uh, it just it sailed, sailed away. It, so it just it went under. Nothing to be uh, ashamed of, nothing to make excuses. I mean, it just freaking happens, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just. But you continued to hunt yep. in that front and you had a couple of good encounters, especially a big eight. Point. I had a huge eight point that. Just weren't able to put him in the back of the truck. Right, wasn't able to put him in the back of the truck and you know, I didn't close the deal in Kansas. Another tag sandwich for JC. It is what it is. Hey, man, that's part of it. Hey, yeah. I got the experience of shooting a bow. Mm -hmm. That's at right. My first, at my you first did. buck. Yeah. I missed. Yeah. Had some great encounters. Mm -hmm. And then I got to meet James and Clark. Right. Doesn't really get any better than that. That that is a very successful trip. You're yeah. right. Having an opportunity uh, on a mature deer within archery range is hard. Yes. And you know you got it, and you got to feel that in there. Yeah. And it was uh, some kind of exciting. I'm 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 pumped for you. I'm excited, and I you know what I'm excited for? To get back to Kansas next year. Next year. Oh, I'm really excited. That's gonna be fun. Let's go. Let's go.